I think one of the biggest shocks was the gender roles in a way and how traditional dating was in a lot of cases. So, for example, for my first date with my ex-boyfriend, he came and picked me up at my place with his car. And I didn't expect that. Like, in Germany, it's very common that you just meet up at a place and both people get there and then you leave from there, unless if you want to hang out more. But it's not really something that, like, someone picks you up at your house and then they bring you back home afterwards. I knew that from American movies and I was like, oh, interesting. I didn't expect that to happen. Um, then he paid on the first date, which is not something that's uncommon in Germany, but it's also not like super expected. I feel like for first date nowadays, it might almost be more common in Germany that you split the bill or that somehow you like one person pays for dinner and then the other person pays for drinks or pays for dessert or something so that it's like equal. And then chivalry is a big thing where like American guys are very big on holding the door open, opening the car door for you, um, walking on the outside of the sidewalk, so towards the street. That's like a thing that I had never heard of before, before I came to the US. Um, I forget what the reason for it is. I think it has something, has some historical reason that I think maybe they didn't want the woman to get dirty from like horse waste or something like that in the streets. But basically like a lot of guys feel like it's impolite if they let the woman walk on the street side of the sidewalk never heard of this being a thing in, in America. I mean, I've experienced it several times. So like both my ex-boyfriend and my current boyfriend did this. I mean, my current boyfriend doesn't do it as much anymore because I find it a little ridiculous. And um, as a German woman, I often felt patronized a little bit by these things where I was like, yeah, it's really nice of you to open the car door for me. But one time, this was actually after my first relationship. And then I was on a date with someone else. Um, and he insisted that I couldn't get out of the car until he had got gotten out of the driver's seat, walked around the car, opened up the car door for me, and then I could get out of the car. And that was nice the first time, but then he wanted to do that every single time. And I was like, that's ridiculous. Like, I'm a grown up woman. I can open my own car door. I don't want to have to wait 10 seconds every time for you to like come around and open the door for me. Um, so some of these things I felt, yeah, almost like uncomfortable with, even though I understand that it's a, a good intention. But for me, I come from a culture where everything is just a little bit more emancipated, I guess, and a little bit more equal. I think compliments also is a huge thing. American guys, compared to German guys, give a lot of compliments. How does that, you know, as you mentioned, as a German woman, you felt really uncomfortable around waiting for a guy to open the car door for you. What about compliments? Was it too much for you? <laughs> Good question. I feel like I've gotten used to it now. And I think it's it's a learning experience, not just for Europeans, but I think just in general, um, in personal development to just learn to accept compliments. So I think I've definitely learned that by now. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know if I was uncomfortable. I think I just didn't believe them at first. I think it, it was like, yeah, sure, you think that I'm the prettiest and all of these these superlatives that you just threw at me. Like, I, I couldn't really believe it. Like, I thought it was a little too much for it to sound real, if that makes sense. Like, I think in a lot of cases, I would have preferred a more subtle compliment because I would have believed it more and I would have, would have appreciated it more rather than, like, you know, these over-the-top compliments. Such as, like, oh, you're looking so hot, you're so beautiful. Yeah, or, like, you're the most beautiful woman in the room, or you're so crazy intelligent, and like, after the person just met me. Like, how you don't even know. Like, how can you even compliment me on something that you don't even know yet? You know, stuff like that, where I just couldn't take it seriously. Yeah, no, I, I totally get you. With dating in Germany, and I don't know how your experience has been or how many boyfriends you've had in Germany, but was there something that you feel is lacking in the German dating culture? Do you wish Germans did this more? I think a lot of people in Germany miss that guys even approach them. I think just it comes with our how reserved we are as a culture is that guys don't really approach women a lot or vice versa. Um, it's just a little bit more people are holding back a little bit more and it's a little harder to just even meet people to begin with. Um, other than that, honestly, I was in long-term relationships and well, one main long-term relationship in Germany and so were most of my friends at the time. And a big difference 
this doesn't really tie in with your question of like what I miss, but it's a big difference that I've noticed is that in my late teens, early 20s, mid 20s, um, all throughout that age, fa- uh, age, all throughout that time, it was very common for me and my friends to have long term committed relationships. And it was common to be with someone for a few years, even if you already maybe knew that you weren't going to get married. Um, Whereas here, I felt like when I met people in their early 20s and they were in a long-term relationship, in a long-term relationship, either they were already married or I even met people that were already divorced at 21 or something like that, which was crazy to me. Or it was like, once you were in a long-term relationship, everyone expected you to get married. Like it was kind of like this huge commitment. Whereas in Germany, I feel like you can still be with someone and live with them. I also lived with my boyfriend in Germany for a few years. A lot of people do that for practical reasons too. It, it's not it's not that big of a deal. Whereas here when people moved in with each other, and I think the Midwest is very conservative in that regard, a lot, like their families and their friends would automatically expect, oh, okay, now you're getting married. Or they weren't even allowed to live with each other until they got married. Um, so I think in a lot of regards, relationships are a little bit more realistic in Germany in the sense of it's okay to be with someone for a few years and maybe you'll drift apart. Maybe the way that your lives develop, it doesn't line up and in a few years you're going to break up. That doesn't mean that you can't be together now. In the US, I always felt like it's a little more all or nothing. Like either you're fully in it now or like you can't be in it at all. And going hand in hand with that is one of the biggest things that I don't like about American dating, so now I've switched <laughs> to like, what do I not like about American dating, is I think people here are so scared of commitment and confrontation. And Germans are not conf- uh, scared of conf- confrontation as a culture, like that's confrontation is in our blood. And even though in dating, people are maybe a little bit more scared of confrontation than they would be with a friend, it's still very normal to be very honest and open with each other as you date someone, to just tell them transparently, hey, I don't think you're a good match for me, but I really like hanging out with you. I'd be down to have like a friends with benefits thing or something like that. Or just telling someone, hey, that was really nice three dates. I don't really think that we're a good match, period. And I'm not saying ghosting doesn't exist in Germany. It definitely does, but not as much as in the US. Ghosting in the US is crazy. And I, it's not just something that I've experienced myself, but also just being in college and having roommates and having friends. It was literally the norm. Being ghosted was normal almost. Like I've had friends where they were dating someone, not like being exclusive, but just like going on a few dates, which that was also always a huge thing with like, are we exclusive or not? And the guy asked them to meet his mom next weekend and he was staying at her place overnight. And then he literally got up in the middle of the night and left. And that was the last time that she ever heard from him. Like, what is happening? (laughs) Crazy. And that's not even that odd of a story. I've heard several of those stories. I've been ghosted myself. It's weird. And I feel like It has to do with Americans being so scared of confrontation that they really, really, really don't want to tell you something uncomfortable to your face or even via text, that they'd rather just disappear and hope that you get the hint. That is an absolutely crazy story. You know, having said that, of course, I know ghosting is a huge thing in North America. And actually, uh, I think U.S. and Canada as well. Um, Mm -hmm. Because I've heard so many times uh, Europeans sharing the exact same thing with me. Where I I also think that what we talked about when it comes to the Americans viewing everything as a kind of commodity mm-hmm. that plays into dating as well, where I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, but in Germany, when you're dating each other, you're just going to date each other. Let's see how that goes. If it doesn't work, we break up. But in the US, the idea is to date as many people as you want until you have the talk, which is where you you determine that you're exclusive, but until then it's expected that you're going to be dating multiple people, right? Absolutely. And yeah. <laughs> such a difference. That was a huge culture shock for me as well. Cause like, I'm glad that with my first boyfriend, it wasn't really an issue, but he did have the talk with me at some point And he asked if I'm his girlfriend. And I was like, I, th- yeah, I thought I was like, for me, that was already implied. Like we've been doing all these relationship things. Um, and 
I know that some Germans also have the talk, but in a lot of relationships, it's also just kind of implied. Like you just, it just happens. Like you just naturally develop into a relationship. And as you said, as soon as you kind of do things, things in like a dating manner, you would expect the other person to automatically not see other people unless they ask you if that's okay. So it would be more like the default is that you don't see other people. And if you do want to see other people, you have to have a talk about that. Whereas in the US, as you said, it's the other way around. Like the default is that, of course, you're going to be seeing other people until you have to talk about being exclusive. And then especially in like your 20s, from what I experienced, a lot of people are very, very scared of the being exclusive talk. A lot of people are going to be like, let's not put labels on it. I just want to have fun. I just want to hang out. I don't want to like have a commitment. I don't want to put the label boyfriend or relationship. And I think that's very toxic in a lot of ways because I don't really know what people are scared of. You can be someone's boyfriend and then still break up three months later. It's okay. But I think Americans are so scared of that confrontation that they would then have to break up again, that they don't even want to commit in the first place. 